how to use the ruler tool in Rebel 3. How to draw a straight line. Of course, you can draw all kinds of different lines. And of course, if you want to draw a straight line, you can obviously carefully do it. But there's a ruler tool to be able to do that. And you can find that in the edit menu and ruler tool. Now, a panel pops up as well, which is quite useful. It's got a few features. Personally, the lock control points have no real use for. All it does is lock the position of those control points. Freehand is more useful. I'll show you that a little bit later. You can move these, this line along, and it doesn't, the straight long line is not confined to those, between those points, but it will run parallel. You can see those guides above, and I'll just drag that down. You can see little, there's little pluses or guides, and that's where it draws it. So you can just draw from there, but it's not confined to that. You can go beyond that. So you can go straight out to the other edge of the document. And you can also use create dots and dash designs and all those sort of things with it. So it's not doesn't need to be a continuous line. It can be used with any of the brushes as well. And also you can apply it on layers. You can also use it in different colors. And you can see you can just create uh, separate brush strokes and it's all still in a line. So it's a really nice feature. I'm just going to undo that. And there is an option freehand. Now, there's not much difference between freehand and the actual one, but it's, it gives a slightly more rougher brush stroke. So it gives it a more natural straight line. That's the idea. You know, you can see it still see it straight, but it's more sort of slightly jagged. It's a rougher line. There's a bit of random in there. So that's the freehand. Personally, don't use it. But there it is. There is freehand there. What else can you do with this? Well, if you want to move it and you want it all still to be in the same parallel line, then just move it from center. But if you want to rotate it, go to the endpoints and rotate those and then draw the line. And now it will be, obviously in this case, nearly diagonal. And you can then apply it. And again, it will go between those two points. Those plus guidelines and you can move it again from the center if you want to keep it parallel to the original line and apply it again and you can do that over and over again and you can still of course use the freehand as well if you wish so you can create all kinds of nice straight line designs and you can still rotate it around now sometimes you get a slight wiggle there at the start I've noticed that, but again, you could either draw over it so you wouldn't notice it, or just undo if you've created that sort of thing. It does occasionally create that sort of thing. And you can extend all the way over to the edge. And you can use any of the brushes as well, if you wish. Change the color. And you can move it up and again, draw from those guides there. You can rotate it and draw again. You don't have to use the ruler tool. I'm going to show you that next. But the ruler tool is quite handy. It's a nice guide. It would be really good if there was an elliptical ruler as well. That would be great. But you can see ruler tool, edit menu is off. And what you can then do, and it's slightly odd this one, so hover over where you want your origin point to be, hold down the shift, don't click the document, hold down the shift key, and then drag outwards to an end point, and then click the document and draw back to that point. And you can continue on, of course, you don't have to get to that, or you can stop before that. But it's slightly odd, so you can always just go from a point and Go all the way out, but don't click the document because it will then rejig the origin point, any point where you do that. So again, you what you do, go there, hover over it and hold down the shift and then go drag out and then click the document and then paint backwards. Slightly odd way of doing it, painting backwards. And sometimes I do it wrong and I go, I, I 
end up moving the thing when I shouldn't be doing that. So you just hover and then hold down shift and then drag out. And then, so I've just done that then. So I've made a mistake. So that's what happens. It's quite easy to do, but just a few goes, you should get in the rhythm of using that. It's slightly counterintuitive to my mind. So it's simply define where you want your start point to be, then go to the end point by dragging outwards and then going back to the start point. And you can see, and that will be in a straight line. And you can, of course, once you've got your side, you can still go backwards and forwards and you can still be, so it doesn't have to be stopping at the start point. It's just defining the line. And you can just go back, draw back from that point. And you can use this to create interesting starburst designs. And obviously I'm using a particular brush, the ink pen, but you could, of course, use any of the other brushes as well and add in effects. Maybe apply this design on a layer. So what you can do, you can create a design, a starburst, and obviously you can create more complex starburst star designs than this, and then duplicate it. Maybe layer it on top of each other rotate it a bit, and then combine, merge them. And you can repeat that over and over again. And again, select everything and then merge them all together. So you can create that very basic star, but of course you can always draw it more. Just a standard star, just by, but if you want a more very precise star like this, where it's straight lines, this is quite a good way of doing it. Simply define that center point, drag outwards, and then click and draw back to that start point. You can see again, you can just start anywhere else. And it's like I say, very easy to slightly do it wrong. Quite often I redefine the position where my start point is. But I think after a few goes, you should get it reasonably So you can just go out and hold in, always holding the shift key down. And you can go up or down, whichever way you want to do it. Now you can do similar sort of things where you've got this, again, just drag from that start point and then reach a certain point and then draw up. And again, let's say you don't have, to, you can draw a complete line all the way up from top to bottom. It doesn't stop at the start point. And it's a layer. So you can go to the transform tool and you can move around. What that means also, because it's a layer, you can duplicate that layer. Now you can do that via layer menu or via the layer panel. There's a duplicate command there. Click that, and that will create a duplicate of that line. And what you can then do is use the transform tool and drag. Remember to press return. If you don't, then it will suddenly disappear. And it's slightly quirky. does require, always remember to press return when you define the position using that transform. But just duplicate those, just keep duplicating, create a couple of copies and you can see those in the layer panel. And you can always undo if you make a mistake. And I make lots of mistakes when I'm doing this. So you've got three or four, and then of course, once you've got three or four, what you can do, you can obviously select all those layers and you can merge them and go to layer menu and merge into one. Merge the layer. And then what you can do, you can use the transform tool because it's just a layer still. And you can then duplicate that. And using layer menu or using the layer panel, duplicate it. And then of course you've got more lines. And sometimes it disappears and it's, it's still there, but you've uh, got, you just need to use the transform tool. There, I have to say there is some slightly quirkiness when it works. When I'm doing this, I'm thinking, oh, where's it gone? Then press return. So you can build up quite a complex set of straight lines. Sadly, there's no align or distribute feature 
that would be brilliant. There is no feature for that as far as I'm aware. So you can create multiple lines. And once you've done that, you can select them all, of course, merge them all into one. But you can then duplicate again and again and again. But you can duplicate the whole lot and then rotate it. So you can create a grid. You want to do that. Or maybe use it to create a shadow effect. So you've obviously got this design here. You can select all the layer, merge them all into one, then duplicate that. And then you, of course, can change the color using various filter tools, to change the color, and then you can add a shadow. And you can transform that shadow. So select all the layers there and Again, go to the layer menu and merge them all together, merge the layers. But you can duplicate it, as mentioned, and rotate it, or just slightly transform, slightly shift it a bit, offset it. And of course, what you could do, you don't have to just keep that. You could, of course, add additional brush strokes. Maybe use the shift feature again to create some interesting combinations of straight lines on top of those existing straight lines. So saying you can rotate that layer to create a quick, albeit very rough, grid design. You can then go to the filter menu and you can recolor the design. So you can create some very interesting color combinations for your grid or whatever design you create with those straight lines. Those designs can, of course, be saved and exported to other applications, and then you can manipulate them further in maybe Photoshop and others, apply effects, etc. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always adding new tutorials about Rebel, Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, and many others. Please add some comments. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.